harm reduction programs, they've shown great uh, success in many places, including Vancouver, and thank God we had uh, the Supreme Court rule against closing it down. It was the Supreme Court, right? Yeah. Uh, the one in Vancouver, and hopefully, I think there's plans for many of them to open up in Quebec, which is much more progressive in this area, uh, and they've shown great success all over Europe as well. Um, so the, the thing about, like addictions are very, are not understood well. People think, oh, you've been through, uh, you've been through treatment for five months, you know, the government paid for it, and then you, you screwed it all up again. Like, it's your fault, go to jail or whatever. But most people have to go through uh, treatment programs seven I think the average is seven or eight times before they uh, before they become healed this is hard to, a hard pill to swallow right like why should we have to take care of certain people so so well but actually that's the reality of it so we just need to face the truth which is that these people need a lot of treatment and I don't need that much treatment. I was fortunate and I grew up in a nice home. You know, I have my struggles and my traumas, but they weren't to the effect of me needing those supports in society. And to me personally, like, this is my own spin on things. I'm not counting, you know, I, I, I feel blessed to not have to depend on the system to that degree. And uh, I don't mind if the system pays for people to get better because I understand that my well-being is dependent on everybody's well-being. Our society's well-being isn't just dependent on my house and my family and my money. And, and it's infinitely cheaper than the criminal justice system trying to address the exact same problem. Exactly, yeah. But it doesn't put, put as much money into the economy. So it, it's important to say, I think, that building these super jails is good for the economy in the in the way that the conservative government views the economy and probably the liberals too um, so I you know building jails creates a lot of jobs putting people in jails creates a lot of jobs and it puts a lot of money into the economy but that money is all coming from our tax money and it's not working either we still have the same problems at the end of the day yeah it doesn't address yeah. the social problems no. at all but but that's the thing, like our current government isn't concerned with social problems, actually. They're not really concerned with uh, effectiveness, making things more holistic, making, you know, looking at the social determinants of health. These are not things that are taken into consideration. The only thing that's really taken into consideration is how do we generate more money in the economy. So while this isn't fiscally responsible because it's taking money from I hope Mick will come back. The Canadian Bar Association has put out a really good summary of what's wrong with the bill and including 10 reasons why it's a mistake. So I'll just leave this here and it's got the... Um, is it online too? Yeah, okay. so you can get it off here okay. too, if you want to get it because it's a really and it's very reliable and easy. Can you speak to the the, the intention? <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry we have to go, but no, I, I'm definitely. nearly done. Thank you for coming. Okay. So the third recommendation uh, is to consider educating the public about the social determinants of health, about how to better deal with crime and so on, and also about the cost of rehabilitation versus the cost of incarceration to our tax dollars. Um, so basically, in closing, it's time for a policy to understand that while crime and, um, while crime does exist, violent crime does exist, um, inequity is the, is usually the cause of this crime in the first place. So if we deal with those underlying inequities, then we'll be able to address uh, reducing crime, not by incarceration.